journey of the universe, the story of our emergence from universe, earth, human evolution, right down to the present. It's been a 30-year project. It goes beyond the religions as an invitation um, for those interested in this particular conjunction of spirituality and ecology, and that is this project, Journey of the Universe. It began in a very small article by Thomas Berry, who was our teacher and known to many people, and he just passed away, and we had a wonderful ceremony memorial for him at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine last year, and we're delighted to have Jim Kowalski, the Dean, with us tonight, a real partner in these kinds of works. Thomas Berry, in 1978, wrote a very small little essay called The New Story. And his suggestion was, as we know, we have a scientific story of the evolution of the universe and Earth and human, and we have religious stories from the various world religions. But these are separate, not conjoining, and as we know from our public discourse, often uh, in a non-meeting, shall we say very vocal uh, and angry conversation. Now, his suggestion was, we need a new story. We need an integrating story. We need a framework around which our work, such as the Earth Charter, such as the huge efforts on energy, and Cancun, and UN work, and, and the law, all of these efforts need to have a larger context of meaning. Um, and so Barry said, we need to tell a universe story. And he spent 10 years working with Brian Swim, a scientist out in the West Coast, and they studied and worked with scientists in all different disciplines to write a book called The Universe Story, and that came out in 1992. Now, it's in that legacy, then, that Thomas Berry, Brian Swim, John Grimm, myself, and others have dreamed for a long time, how do we tell this story in film? This is the media, isn't it? This is what will reach young people, and so on. <clears throat> so for the last seven years, we've been trying to do a film. The, the film, we spent two years living in Berkeley, and we wrote a script for this film, working with the director of the Cosmos series, with Carl Sagan, which was one of the most watched television series ever. Billions and billions of stars. <laughs> um, this is David Kennard. And we worked with him for two years to write a script, and then we went to Samos, and that's what I'm going to tell you a story about Samos, a Greek island off the coast of Turkey, and why that was the setting for the film. Um, we are very happy to say, just last week, I was in California, and we have taken it from two hours to an hour and a half to one hour story. Um, but we've got some terrific editors and post-production people uh, working with us there. And we're also very, very happy that KQED, the public station, PBS station in San Francisco, is going to show it and uh, present it through the uh, PBS network, um, which is uh, terrific. And just before I came here, I'm kind of excited to share with you that we also had some news from the uh, Washington, D.C. Environmental Film Festival that we will be featured in the conclusion of that film festival in March. So that's the first film festival, and you're the first to hear. So there's been enormous interest in this film for many, many reasons. Um, in part because a lot of people feel, and this was true about Gus Beth, our great dean at, at the Forestry School, and our present dean too, Peter Green, that we have scientific facts, that we have policy papers, that we have legal measures, that we're developing a green economy, but we don't have this particular sense of a spiritual force and energy of ethics that will complement, supplement, but may as well be a yeast to the movements that are represented in this room and around the world for change to not just sustainability, but to the flourishing of the Earth community. And that's the vision here, um, the flourishing of the Earth community. So what we're trying to do is suggest, I mean, when Tom was talking, there's a bit of a pall, isn't it, when he speaks of some of the facts that we're up against, social and environmental facts. It's quite overwhelming. And a lot of people, um, the denial that you point to, but as well, the paralysis, what can a person do? We are facing the largest challenges humans have ever faced in human history. 
And that is in no small measure why we need a large-scale picture, a large context that inspires and evokes awe and wonder and possibility of change. So this film will be part of it. As well, we have a book that Yale University Press will publish. And Yale has been a huge supporter of this, this process. We're going to do a conference up there in March and bring the film out there as well. The students are very excited about it. Um, and we're bringing scientists and humanities people together to begin the conversation. This is not an answer, but it's dialogical. It's conversation oriented. It's to say, let's think about where we come from. Let's think about the elements of our bodies being created from supernova explosions. What does this mean for the future of life and all species? What are our responsibilities? What do we learn from other cultures um, to continue this extraordinary process of life? So the film, the book, we're also doing a DVD series where we've interviewed 24 scientists and environmentalists so that it can be used in classroom to flesh this out, get a little deeper on the galaxies or the planets and so on, the stars. Amazing amount of material here. But I can also tell you that big history, this notion that we're telling our huge story, is already being taught in both high schools and colleges. And that is really exciting. Um, and so we're going to be working with the educational community on this, both high school and college um, and, and universities. So the final part is a website that will have curriculum uh, as a couple of minutes. I want to tell you what we will on it. Now, before I show you this little trailer that's just 